You're watching Twin Tier Sunday with Jennifer Sheehan. Welcome to Twin Tier Sunday. I'm your host, Jennifer Sheehan. This week, we are in the air. But before we take off the ground, we learn why the Experimental Aircraft Association is an organization that has the hearts of many area residents. Christopher Welsh joins us this week. We're at a very special place. Tell me where we are and what people can do down here. Well, we're at the Elmira Corning Regional Airport in a hangar owned by the Experimental Aircraft Association, Chapter 533. And this is a place for EAA members and the general public to learn about restoring aircraft, building aircraft, and to take advantage of our Young Eagles program to introduce children to aviation. Wonderful. Now, how do people get involved with this organization from the area? There's a number of different ways. If you're interested in joining, you can check out our website or come join us at one of, many, one of our many events and see what we have to offer. If you'd like to participate in Young Eagles, we have a rolling calendar of our events online that's always updated that you can see when we're hosting those events. Now, what is the Young Eagles program? It's a program developed at the EAA national level to introduce children ages 8 to 17 to aviation. Wonderful. And what else can your members actually do down here? Well, we have a, currently we have a, a chapter project going on where we're restoring an antique aircraft, a Cessna 140. We also have opportunities to help other members that are already established with building their aircraft or restoring other aircraft. Uh, it's a good opportunity to learn about aviation. Wonderful. How many aircrafts do you have in the, in the hangar right now? I'd have to look around and count, to be honest. It's pretty <laughs> full at the moment. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. So how did you yourself, Christopher, get involved with aviation? This is actually a plane right behind us that you built. Actually, I didn't build it. I restored it. It was built by one of our other members uh, who gave up on flying, and he sold it to me, and I took a few months and restored it, and it's been a good airplane ever since. Uh, as far as my history, I'm actually a third-generation corporate pilot. Uh, my whole family's in aviation. It's what I grew up in, what I love, and it's my life's passion. It's what I do. All right, um, I guess then let's take a look inside the plane. Getting inside the small aircraft is a challenge at first. It really gives a picture to children and young adults what they might be experiencing as they take their first flight with the Young Eagles program. Here, okay. and then just kind of swing yourself up in and move that where you need to to get your feet up. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay. All right, so Christopher is going to explain now what this plane is kind of like the components of it, how he built it, how he got it from top to bottom. You were telling me that this plane was had a previous owner. Tell me about it. Yeah, the uh, one of the founding members of our chapter uh, actually donated the money to build our hangar. Uh, built the aircraft back in the early 90s and uh, he was getting out of aviation so he actually took the airplane apart and it sat in the corner of our hangar for about 14 years and uh, after about a year of bugging him he decided to sell it to me and um, with the help of another member here utilizing the resources we have in our hangar we worked for about six months we were able to find a new engine for it get it installed I installed all new instruments and avionics in it and we got her flying again and we put about uh, 70 flight hours on it in the past year. It's been a really good airplane. Oh my goodness. All right, tell me about some of the components inside of the airplane that might not be on, you know, a, a typical air, I guess. Explain to me this, this all these gadgets because I really I'm clueless on them. So. <laughs> no problem. The, the instrumentation in it is uh, very similar to what you'd find in any recreational aircraft. Uh, a lot of the stuff is very similar. We have an airspeed indicator, we have an altimeter, we have a vertical speed indicator, a tachometer, and then all of your standard engine gauges. You have cylinder head temperature, exhaust gas temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, very similar to what you'd find in a car. Many of the things carry over. It's just a reciprocating piston engine. It's not too special. Um, one thing that's different about this compared to most aircraft is the engine is actually liquid cooled, much like your car, whereas most aircraft engines are air cooled for simplicity and weight savings. Um, also, for navigation, we have a GPS system, um, and then there's a digital comm to be able to talk to air traffic control or other aircraft around you. And there's a transponder, which broadcasts a code in our altitude to be received by air traffic control's radar stations. So they can see where we are relative to other aircraft. Okay, wonderful. Um, st uh, standard switches, we have a, a throttle, just like you would on any other airplane. Where is that, is that this guy? This is the throttle right here. And then you have uh, fuses, much like in an old car or some old houses, uh, versus circuit breakers. Some people prefer it. I'm kind of indifferent, but this has fuses. 
Wonderful. Now, when you guys start flying, do you have to correlate or match up, I guess, with the ELM airport over here? Yeah, we're, we're on the Elmira Corning Regional Airport, so just like any other uh, aircraft, be it an airliner or this airplane operating out of here, we work with air traffic control for spacing and clearances for taking off, landing, taxiing about the airport. And how long does it take for someone to learn how to fly one of these, I guess, and go out on their own? Well, that depends a lot on the person. Um, typically, the, the, the rule of thumb, if you will, is the more frequently you can fly, the quicker you'll learn it and retain it. Because if you don't fly often, you lose a lot of the things that you gained in the, the previous lesson, and it ends up taking you longer and costing you more money. So the more dedicated you can be to it, the more studious, the quicker you get it done, the less it'll cost. I've seen people do it in as little as a couple of weeks or a couple of years. Okay, all right. I guess uh, we might take a flight now. So here we go. <laughs> cool. All right, we're in very tight quarters, as you can see. We're about to take off. Um, I think we're actually going to fly over the news station, so we'll make sure to show you that, too. Um, very easy to start the airplane. Anything else you'd like to say to our viewers? Come on out, take a flight with us. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so here we go. Um, I'll be explaining the flight to you. I'll be showing things to you throughout the trip. The first thing Christopher did was let the air traffic control tower know we're preparing to take flight. Alright, so we're getting ready to take off right now. Right now, we're... right now we're taxiing out to the runway. Anything else we should know? Here's some taxiway signs. It's kind of like the, uh, the road map of the street signs for the airport. Much like the uh, Ford Trimotor that you went up with us uh, last year, this airplane is a tail dragger, meaning the, the little wheels in the back instead of in the front. So the first thing you'll notice as we accelerate, the tail of the airplane is gonna come up and your view out the front is a whole lot better. So we are at the end of the runway right now. We have to stop and check our engine. He then checks all the gauges, or does a run-up to make sure all the engine systems are working correctly before takeoff. Let's so check the carburetor heat. Our volts and amps look good. Oil temperature, exhaust gas, oil pressure, water temperature all look good. We're just going to give it another minute to warm up and then we'll be on our way. So tell me, how many times have you flown this airplane? This airplane, well, I've flown it, let's see, I'm looking at the uh, Hobbs meter here, it tells it how much time it has on it. I've flown it about 70 hours. Number of times, I don't know, I'd have to look through my logbook. I usually fly about an hour each time, so approximately 70 flights. Wow. And how many other people have you taken on this airplane? Oh, geez, several dozen at least. <laughs> a lot of young eagles. There you go. Now, you were telling me that there's a fox on the back of the airplane. What is that? Oh, it's uh, some <laughs> custom artwork we had done to, uh, Spruce up the airplane a little bit, kind of an homage to the uh, World War II style pinup nose art that the, uh, the young pilots would put on their aircraft. Okay, so before we take off, what is the next step um, before we get in the air? Well, uh, we're going to, as soon as the engine's up to temperature here, we're going to call the Elmira Tower and ask them for our takeoff clearance. We're just going to tell them that we're ready and most likely if there's no other airplanes taking off or landing, they'll clear us for takeoff and we'll be on our way. Oh, so, so, oh yes, we are going to fly over the news station. We'll show you that in just a moment. Alright, you ready? Let's do it. Alright. Here we go. We are departing. Alright, we're clear for takeoff, so off we go. It's built for off-field operations, so we get off the ground super fast. We're starting our flight. I was a little nervous at first. Those feelings quickly subsided as the landscape of the southern tier became comforting, seeing the changing colors of fall in the 
never-ending rolling hills. It's absolutely stunning. So right now we're about a thousand feet above the valley, as you can see here. This is what Chris is telling me. Wow. See, so just don't realize how beautiful it is here until you're up in the air. You can see so much. It's a little bit of a, a cloudy day, but it's still very, very nice. Christopher said that I am allowed to fly the airplane. I don't know if this is a good idea. Well, we do need to introduce you to aviation. Let's see how you do. All right, bye. <laughs> Now, although I did get to fly the plane, it was for such a short time, well, because the fear of me crashing the plane was not settling well, but seeing the WNY station from above was the highlight of the flight. Christopher also said because the doors of the plane can open freely and it was completely safe, the view with nothing between you and the sky is something you just can't beat. Overall, it was an experience I'm sure I or anyone that has the opportunity to take flight will never forget. Alright, so we're landing right now in grass because this actually this plane is better to land in grass. Safer. It's probably gonna be a little bumpy. There we go. We're almost to the ground. And we are. All right, we're here with John Meggs. Now tell me, how are you involved with EAA? Well, I'm, I've been a member, I'm part of the board, but I also am the Young Eagles flight coordinator for this chapter. Okay, now what is Young Eagles? I know that I was talking with Christopher about it a little bit, but he said that you'd have more details. Well, the Young Eagles program is uh, a, a part of the Experimental Aircraft Association. In a sense, it's kind of an outreach program for young people. Uh, children, young people uh, between the age of 8 and 17, uh, we like to offer them a flight experience that's a, a bit more comprehensive than, uh, say, a scenic tour. Okay, and then how did you get involved with this program? Well, uh, it's, it's important to me for a number of reasons. Um, when I was uh, very young, uh, my uncle would always take us flying in a, a Piper Cub, exactly like this one. And the experience was, uh, was so important to me uh, in terms of understanding how things like math and science and geography, these subjects in school that, you know, it was kind of boring, <laughs> when I actually had something to do with it, where it would uh, enhance my, uh, my experience flying with my uncle, um, I wanted to, to un understand more about reading maps and I wanted to be better at math so that uh, when we would fly, uh, he would be impressed. So he was uh, somebody I looked up to and uh, I very much uh, wanted to offer that same experience to young people here. So uh, when I had the opportunity to become the Young Eagles flight coordinator, I, I jumped at the chance. That is wonderful. What is the reaction from kids when they come out and hop in the plane? 
there's usually there's a little bit of nervousness, um, but what we do is we do a walk around the aircraft first, just as every pilot does, uh, looking at all the parts of the airplane and explaining. So it's a, a an educational experience. We also, when uh, when we get in the aircraft, we explain how the doors work and the seat belts, and explain the uh, instrument panel, which can be kind of intimidating the first time. Uh, I remember the first first flight where I took the controls. It was holy smokes, you know, to look at all this going on. But uh, I think the more you're exposed to it at a young age, the less intimidating it is. So by taking some of that intimidation out, when you understand things are a little less scary, when you actually take that first flight, and the first flight is like about 15 to 20 minutes, which is a good, uh, a good length of time to know whether or not it's something you enjoy, because yeah. not everybody enjoys it. Uh, and then come back and then there's an opportunity to talk and ask questions and so on. So our, our pilots are, uh, are really good, very patient, uh, brave, and uh, very thorough with the uh, pre-flight inspections. Wonderful. Now what are some of the, I guess, um, options kids have to come down and do it? When do you offer these classes? Well, uh, your best bet is to go to the uh, uh, EAA website. Uh, if you Google, say, Young Eagles, um, it, it will take you to the site, and there are a lot more details. So you can find the Young Eagles flight coordinator, in, maybe there's a, a, an airport or a chapter closer to where you are uh, in the viewing area, uh, but you can certainly contact me, and we have events uh, fairly frequently, about monthly, sometimes more often, and uh, we'll certainly be happy to include you. Well, now, have you seen any of these kids then go on to actually go into aviation? Uh, there are um, a number of uh, young pilots here who were part of this. The program is, is only about 20 years old. So they're, um, uh, in terms of long-time career pilots, mm, it's, it's still a little, little early for, for that. I don't think uh, Captain Sullenberger uh, <laughs> was, uh, was a kid in, in 1992. But, um, there certainly we're starting to see uh, people whose interest and passion was sparked by the Young Eagles program. For me, I was very fortunate to have a, an uncle who uh, knew what it did for him back in the 1930s. So for for me, it sparked my interest, and uh, I'm I'm happy to give it back. So how did then, other than you flying with your uncle, when did you start taking classes? I actually was a, a little bit later in life. I became an engineer. Uh, my uncle was an engineer, and. Uh, so I, I sort of followed in his footsteps in a way. And uh, when I moved here to the uh, uh, Southern Tier, uh, it was just such a perfect place to learn to fly. Uh, the, uh, the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. It's affordable to fly here. And uh, the people are, are more, I'd say, more passionate about the flying part of it than the I want to teach somebody or a flight school, that sort of thing. It's much less commercial, much more grassroots passion about aviation. All right, is there anything else that you might want to tell us about the plane before we take a look inside? Well, sure. The, this is a 1939 Piper J3 Cub, so it was the second year they were built down here in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. Um, there have been so many of these built that uh, if you Google and look for pictures online, you'll be looking forever because <laughs> this is the aircraft that taught America to fly. Um, it makes an excellent trainer aircraft. It's kind of slow, but in terms of visibility when you're flying, you, you can't beat it. The uh, footstep right here, one of my earliest memories, my uncle uh, would pull me up into the aircraft because my, I couldn't reach my little leg up to that step. <laughs> so I was, I was a very small child when I started flying with him. Uh, so every time I look at that step, I remember my uncle yanking me up into the aircraft and, and it hurt for a moment, but it was always worth it. And although this plane was very old, John explained that it flew with the same concept as many modern planes. Let's take a look inside. Well, this is a pretty simple aircraft. It was built in 1939. So you'll notice there's no GPS, there's no video screen. Uh, some people do update their old aircraft, but this is as it was in 1939, more or less. Um, so very simple uh, instrumentation. You have, um, you have an airspeed indicator that lets you know how, travel, how fast you're traveling through the air. It can be different than how fast you're traveling through the ground, because as soon as you lift off 
from the ground, you're now moving with the air. That's why a tailwind can make you go faster. It takes less time to get there than you would think. So airspeed is very important both for knowing how fast you're going, uh, but also for how to conduct the airplane. Here we have the altimeter that lets you know how far above uh, ground level you are, how far you are by pressure. And of course, since weather changes, you have to adjust this before you take off. We have some instruments for the engine. One lets you know whether or not you're overheating. And then we have one that lets you know whether or not you have oil pressure. This is uh, as close to GPS as we have. This is a magnetic compass, very Boy Scouty. But uh, uh, this is uh, this is basically um, basically it. And then I guess is this how you steal or steer the rudder? This is how you fly. So this is this go. is what we call oh, stick and rudder. Okay? okay. So the the stick as you pull back will move the elevator so that the nose of the aircraft will come up. Okay. Pushing it down will push the nose down. If you want to bank the aircraft, left or right, you'll push the stick to the left or to the right. And it moves the ailerons on the, on the wings of the aircraft to, to bank the wings. Okay, done. So relatively simple. You have two pedals on the floor. Oh yeah, they're back here. And they adjust the rudder. So you have full axis control uh, while you're in the air. So instead of driving uh, on the ground where you can go faster or slower and you can turn left and right, you have left, right, you have nose up, <laughs> nose down, <laughs> you have, right, so you have full three-dimensional control, which is pretty neat. And flying for the first time is like so many other first experiences, like the first time you see the ocean or first kiss. These are things that you never will forget in your entire life. And the first time you fly, um, in a small aircraft is, is unforgettable. That feeling of leaving the ground and seeing it move away from you and seeing the world in a completely different way. And when you take the controls and you suddenly have control of your motion through space in all dimensions, it's, it's unbelievable and unforgettable. And then I guess, so when a young eagle is on the airplane, is this the one that they fly in, or do they fly in a this different is, aircraft? This is one. Uh, this is one of the aircraft that, that we have. There are um, uh, several pilots in our organization, and they volunteer their own aircraft for uh, Young Eagles flights. So we we have uh, Beach Bonanzas and Piper Archers and Piper Tomahawks and a number of different aircraft. Each of them uh, has its own sort of personality and. And characteristics. This one for me is brings back memories because it was the first aircraft that I flew in. But um, the experience is the same regardless of the aircraft. That first time uh, getting off the ground is is just unforgettable. And they get the opportunity to fly as well a little bit, if, to my understanding, correct? If they want to, you know, it's about a 15 to 20 minute flight, and not everybody feels comfortable with that the first time they're they're off the ground. Um, in fact. I was fairly old before I actually took the controls. Uh, it's different for everybody. I enjoy being a passenger in an aircraft almost as much as flying. It's true, and last time I was here, Christopher took me up for a little bit of a flight. He let me fly. Unfortunately, I wasn't rolling the camera because I didn't want to crash the plane, but um, he let me fly, and I was terrified. <laughs> I was absolutely terrified that I was going to crash the plane, so I understand that feeling of a little bit of an uncomfortable uh, first flight, as you said, but it was definitely... The, for the first time I was in a small aircraft too and it's it was just comforting it was beautiful it was a beautiful thing to experience coming up after the break we take a look at a plane that made a surprise stop at EAA chapter 533 All right, go ahead and tell me who you are and what this plane is because we walked outside and I heard I was going to go on a special flight today. Hi, my name is Wayne McMaster. I'm from the Elmira area here originally. Uh, this is an RV-7 that I built uh, back, uh, started about 2003 and ended in 2010. Uh, so I've been flying it for about uh, five years. Um, I'm just visiting the area again and uh, help to help support EAA in this chapter here in the uh, aviation here in the community. Oh my gosh, so how long did it take you to build this plane? 
Uh, this airplane came as a box of metal and a bunch of plans, basically, and it took about seven and a half years to go from start to finish. Oh my gosh. So why did you choose this plane instead of, you know, any other type of model that there may be? Uh, this airplane's great. It's aerobatic, so it's fun. It can go upside down. That's, oh, no. It's fast, <laughs> and it's very safe. Uh, and uh, the combination of everything makes it a perfect airplane for me. It's about the best of all the worlds. Wonderful. All right, so it's a little special treat here. And then I guess how often do you come here with this plane, or do you visit this uh, aviation center often? Uh, my family is really active up at Harris Hill. Uh, my father uh, helped the, start the club, uh, or really get the club going back in the early 70s. And uh, I've been a member of the club up there for a long time. Uh, I have a brother who's a professional pilot in town as well. And so I come visit family at least two or three times a year. Oh and I goodness. typically come in my own plane. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. So the plane is actually really small inside. So I won't be able to bring in the big camera equipment, but we got a GoPro. So you'll be able to get a little sneak peek of what it looks like up in the air. The takeoff was a bit different than the previous flight because Wayne has a smoke system as an added piece of aircraft flare. Yeah, well, the airplane, uh, we fly uh, quite a bit of stuff around my local airport. We have uh, a bunch of guys with similar airplanes. We do a lot of formation flying. We have uh, smoke systems so we can make kind of the air show looking smoke. It's kind of fun. Uh, as well as uh, just generally we just like to go fly. <laughs> Basically, the airplane is set up uh, about like a modern day airliner. I've got uh, several TV screens across the way. The ones with the white buttons are set up. They can be a, uh, what we call a primary flight display. It gives us an artificial horizon, so it looks just like we're looking out the window. We can fly in the clouds with that. I have an airspeed indicator on the left side of it. The right side is an altimeter. And uh, these things are also a navigation display, so we can see uh, where we are, what's around us, uh, whether it be cities or navigational. Uh, equipment on the ground. Uh, down below uh, on the right hand side is a communication and navigation radio so I can use that as a GPS so I can fly direct to just about anywhere which is great. Even though with all your gadgets and everything it looks almost very similar like the core basics the same as the planes that we were looking at inside. Is that true? That's absolutely correct yeah. Uh, the instruments on this airplane uh, they take the place of the old round dial mm -hmm. gauges. But it's all the same stuff, the same equipment, effectively. Without a piece of our local aeronautical history and how the organization hopes to encourage the future generations of our area to take up the spirit of aviation. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.